What's up, knuckleheads? Today we're talking about Tony Ferguson and his three losses. Tony's three defeats. Yes, the boogeyman loses. But he comes back stronger. Interestingly, two of his losses came in just the second year of his pro career in 2009. And his next and only other loss came in 2012. But nine wins separated them. Not counting his three wins in the tough house. Ah! I thought it'd be fun to work backwards, so let's get started. Let's get it all! Tony Ferguson versus Michael Johnson from May 5th, 2012 was the last time Tony lost. Eight years! He had a lot of hype behind him for this match too, by being the tough season 13 winner and defeating veterans like Eve Edwards. Right hand oh, him. That one hurt him. Now he's starting he's to turn it on. Body. Big flurry by he's Tony trouble. Ferguson. But his battle with Michael Johnson proved to be a difficult puzzle for him. It was his third fight at lightweight, previously competing at welterweight division, and like I said, he was on fire. Overall, it was a close fight. The action was timid on both sides, with three punch-kick combos at a time. They both had knockout power and were hesitant to stay in the pocket. Tony made no attempts to use his wrestling or jujitsu, and it appeared that both fighters wanted to counter-strike, which caused a lot of stagnant circling. <laughs> The first round was tight until Johnson landed an overhand left and dropped Tony. But Tony popped back up, landed a counter strike of his own, and it pushed Johnson back. Johnson landed a significant blow, but Tony's recovery was really fast and impressive. This is basically how the entire fight went. Johnson outpointed Ferguson slowly but surely by attacking Tony's legs with kicks and sneaking in that left hand to achieve the more damaging strikes. Tony never looked beaten or out of it, but Johnson undoubtedly landed the higher percentage of significant strikes. So what happened? This was ages ago, 2012. Tony is the kind of fighter that is constantly evolving his game, which is what separated him from Michael Johnson in the long run. In this fight, Tony had his hands down, and when he would throw a kick on Johnson, he dropped his hands even more, and it opened him up to Johnson's counter strikes. The frustration on Tony's face was evident, but Michael Johnson outstruck Tony every round except for the second, in which case they tied at best. Tony pushed forward all fight, but he looked puzzled and fought to a unanimous decision loss. Tony Ferguson, Mr. Darce Choke, as I call him, was only actually stopped once in his three losses, and it was by triangle choke, in which case he went unconscious rather than tap. Now that's champ shit. The fight happened back in 2009 versus Jamie Tony. Let's take a look. Oddly, there isn't much footage of this fight floating around. But from what you can find, especially with the grappling exchanges, it's baffling. We have never seen Tony manhandled like that. Jamie Tony, who went into the fight with Ferguson on a two-fight win streak, but a 17-fight veteran, dominated the grappling. Tony never had a chance of even utilizing any striking. The submission happened in round one, and it's clear that El Kukui at this point just didn't have enough jiu-jitsu experience to understand the positioning. He needs to work on his jiu-jitsu, and otherwise he's got it covered, you know? There is also a chance he left himself vulnerable through frustration because every time he got close to the pocket, he'd be taken down, which is also surprising because Tony Ferguson wrestled throughout high school and college. I have wrestling where I went to high school. Ultimately, I'm not too worried about Tony getting caught in submissions anymore. In fact, because of this fight, I'm encouraged. Tony went hard in on, on jiu-jitsu after this fight and has become something of a specialist himself, receiving his black belt from Eddie Bravo at 10th Planet in 2017. Jamie Tony, on the other hand, went on to a limited pro career, finishing 17 and seven, and never making it to the big stage. While Tony Ferguson, on the other hand, became a legend. Yeah, I wish the best for Anthony. He's a tough kid. He's uh, got a bright future, and he's still young. And I hope I wish him the best. Tony Ferguson's first loss came at the hands of Karen Derabedian. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. And believe me, there is no footage of this at all. Karen trained with Carl Parisian and Manny Gamburian, 
who were both really tough fighters in the UFC. So I'm sure that it was a fun fight. But Tony lost by unanimous decision. He was 4-0 and before that fight and went on a three-fight win streak after that fight until he lost to Jamie Tony, like we just discussed. What we can learn from the numbers, at least, is that Tony doesn't get rattled. The fact that after all his losses, he went on at least a three-fight win streak afterwards tells us he doesn't care. El Kukui earned his nickname in my book. Tony Ferguson doesn't get tired, and his opponents have a tough time even hurting the guy. Tell us what you think. Stay connected for our weekly recap video, which is coming up next, by liking this video and subscribing. Bye, Felicia.